Have you ever thought why the structures like the tooth or bone is hard? Let's find out in this video. In this video, let us see how heart tissue formation occurs and what makes any heart tissue hard. Have you talked about this any time? Interesting, isn't it? Um, the tissues like the bone, the dentin, cementum or even enamel all are heart tissues associated with the tooth. And in-depth knowledge of all these structures is absolutely required because the practice of dentistry involves manipulation of all these uh, heart structures. The purpose of this video is uh, uh, number one, explain some of the common features that are associated with all the different heart tissue and their formation uh, even though the final product might be different but the process remains the same number two understand the process of heart tissue formation uh, by saying that i can say the dentin uh, cementum and bone all have similarities between them however enamel is uniquely different different from the rest uh, but it still follows the same basic principles involved in its formation uh, so now let us look at the differences before before we go to see the similarities between all these structures the differences between enamel and other three tissues uh, and its formation to begin with let us understand what makes any heart tissue hard any heart tissue has uh, two components number one is the matrix proteins that is actually produced by the formative cells such as your osteoblasts or ameloblasts or odontoblasts and this matrix proteins is called as organic portion that actually forms the framework. Now, the calcium and phosphate ions that are actually attracted to this particular framework to form a structured mineral tissue and this is called as inorganic portion and this makes the soft matrix actually hard. Now, let us look at the differences between the different structures. The dentin, cementum and bone all are collagen based and collagen forms the predominant framework and uh, however enamel lacks this collagen absolutely but it has its unique set of proteins called as amylogenins and non-amylogenins. Enamel does not contain collagen. You need to remember this. Number two, the dentin, cementum and bone all are considered to be a living specialized connective tissue but enamel is not as other three tissues can form later in life as well they can heal if they are damaged but enamel cannot as the cells that once formed them are no more available to even repair the enamel. Number three, the dentin, cementum and bone all have organic matrix that is totally unmineralized before actually the calcium or phosphates gets into them to make it hard. That unmineralized matrix is called by their respective names like for dentin we call it as dentinoid or predentin. For bone we call it as osteoid or for cementum it's called cementoid. For enamel there is nothing like enameloid because the enamel as soon as it is secreted it is 30% mineralized later the 30% goes on to become 100% mineralization during its maturation process. Number four, collagen based heart tissues actually provides a rigid structural framework of protection to the soft tissues. However, enamel does not have this structural function. Instead, it serves something like abrasion resistant or a coating that actually depends on its large mineral crystals. Now, after knowing the differences, let us try to understand the process of uh, mineralization as such. The inorganic portion in any heart tissue is usually a combination of calcium and phosphate ions that actually come together to form something called as calcium hydroxyapatite crystals. Once they come together, they form a lattice. Mm, the lattice means a structure that actually consists of stack of materials that are fastened together to form that particular structure. Here, calcium and phosphate in this case are stacked together to form a hydroxyapatite crystals. Numerous such hydroxyapatite crystals come together to form any heart tissue, be it be enamel, dentin, cementum or bone. The difference exists only in the shape of the crystals. To understand the process of mineralization, let us take the example like some matrix material has to be produced by any formative cell say an osteoblast 
and now this matrix uh, has to be mineralized imagine that it is super it is surrounded by a tissue fluid that is super saturated with calcium and phosphate ions and because of this super saturation the the, the instantaneous precipitation of, the, of this occurs I mean let me explain it simple take a glass full of plain water just add salt to it what happens it dissolves right what happens if you continuously adding salt keep on adding salt it starts precipitating at the bottom of this glass it's the same basic mechanism what can happen like your matrix is surrounded by super saturated with calcium and phosphate ions in its tissue fluid and the super saturation can occur but it's not so simple because the tissue fluid also contains some molecules that can actually inhibit crystal formation also the ions required to form a lattice is kind of unstable some ions might form a crystal but uh, that crystal is not sufficient to mature enough so if this is not happening how does the dental tissues get hard uh, let's see it can be explained by two basic mechanism uh, that can help achieve the mineralization process uh, number one is your matrix vesicle theory and second one is your heterogeneous nucleation theory your matrix vesicle mechanism occurs in relation to only initial mineralization um, now what is this matrix vesicle matrix vesicle is a small membrane bound structure that actually literally buds off from a cell say an ameloblast or odontoblast it's a cytoplasmic extension uh, 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 from an independent cell to form an independent unit uh, this gets incorporated within the initial matrix and it forms a crystallite because it has certain materials inside so what does it have matrix per cycle contains enzymes like alkaline phosphatase calcium ATPase metallum proteinases phospholipids all these can actually help bind calcium and phosphate ions to form a complex in true sense matrix vesicles provides a micro environment that actually helps to form a crystallite in other mechanism like your heterogeneous nucleation the deposition of your crystals occurs via the atomic groups that are actually associated with the surface holes and pores now what does that mean uh, we need to understand that the collagen when you zoom in it actually has numerous holes and pores and these holes and pores actually attract calcium and phosphate crystals via the atomic groups making the soft collagen hard and this is actually regulated by other non-collagenous proteins I mean some other non-collagenous proteins can support or may inhibit to maintain the balance so to keep it simple basically the crystals gets deposited within the holes and pores of collagen fibers and in between the fibers too the process is called as a nucleation and the sites that actually attract these crystals hydroxyapatite crystals are called as nucleating sites uh, like uh, like this the any heart tissue basically forms but the big question is how does enamel mineralize as it neither contains collagen nor any matrix vesicles that can bud off from ameloblast so to understand this it's basically hypothesized that the initiation of enamel mineralization is believed to be achieved by crystal growth from the already mineralized uh, uh, dentin. Uh, this is widely accepted fact that the initial crystals of your enamel actually come from the dentin as we know that the dentin tissue forms before enamel uh, uh, actually forms. So the dentin precedes the enamel formation. Uh, I hope this video has helped you to understand the process of uh, the mineralization process at the same time uh, it gives you an insight regarding the differences between the other uh, the different types of heart tissue formation if you have any doubts please leave some comments below so that I can address your doubts at the same time if you like this video please subscribe and support